Meet Sarah. She's a sports physiotherapist working closely with athletes at McMaster University, and she is here to tell us all about sports-related concussions. So what is a sports-related concussion? There is no universal definition of a concussion. A sports-related concussion is a type of traumatic brain injury, usually referred to as mild traumatic brain injury. Concussions can be the result of a direct blow to the head, neck, or face. For example, football, soccer, ice hockey, and rugby have some of the highest incidence rates. There are different severity levels of concussions. A sports-related concussion can't be classified as a single event. It is a process for the athlete. Females are more likely than males to experience a sports-related concussion if they've had a concussion before. However, research shows that the time duration prior to return to play, symptoms, abnormalities discovered via neurological testing show no difference between male and females. In addition, the use of headgear can help decrease the chances of a concussion. Failure to recognize a concussion is a common problem for athletes in high school. The signs and symptoms of a sports-related concussion include loss of consciousness, blurred vision, dizziness, fatigue, memory problems, sensitivity to light, sleep disturbance, vomiting, and nervousness. Certain symptoms of sports-related concussions will be visible right away. However, it may take days or months for some other symptoms to become visible. The symptoms are evaluated based on a grading system. More than 20 concussion grading systems exist, but the Cantu evidence-based grading system is most well-known in literature. Furthermore, there are psychological impacts associated with sports-related concussions. Commonly reported emotional responses include anxiety, isolation, depression, denial, anger, shock, and guilt. Injured athletes who are part of sports teams and received support from coach and team members throughout their recovery process reported fewer symptoms of psychological distress. That being said, psychological distress can lead to side effects which may include substance abuse, exercise addiction, family adjustment issues, as well as weight control problems. So who exactly can help these patients? The Government of Canada has created tools to help athletes, families, coaches, and health professionals support and help manage these individuals who have suffered from a concussion. This includes the following. The Canadian Guideline on Concussion in Sport, Return to School Strategy, A Return to Sport Strategy, Canadian Harmonized Concussion Protocols, a school first resource for teachers and school boards to support children and youth after experiencing a concussion, and a mobile app. There is also the Ontario Brain Injury Association. Their helpline is 1-800-263-5404, and they have the Online Concussion Support Group, which is free and confidential, and provides support and more information regarding brain injuries. So what exactly does recovery look like? Recovery is ongoing, one to two weeks after the concussion. The length of recovery varies amongst individuals based on certain factors, including demographics, such as age, race, and gender, health history, such as concussions in past or other medical conditions along with the concussion, the level at which the sport is played, so recreational versus elite, psychological factors, including resilience factors, stress, and neurodevelopmental factors. The risk of another concussion is highest during the one to two week period. For recovery, the patients need rest both physically and at the cognitive level. They should not engage in activities that need attention and require the individual to concentrate. This can slow down recovery and worsen symptoms. If signs and symptoms leave, the individual can work towards making a return to play decision. The decision to resume the sport should be based on a stepwise increase in activities. So they start with less intense exercise and increase intensity slowly.